Hello and welcome to a new build guide where I'll be showcasing the Strength Blood God Blade Master tank idea in another more vampiric form. I said in the last Blood God video how the random enchant Twilight could be an option as it sounded cool thematically on paper. Well my friends, I re-rolled my specialization and I got it with the build still intact and I'm happy to say that truly this random enchant is a major piece of the puzzle that I found to be missing. Vampiric Embrace can provide, in optimal scenarios, the ability for a blood tank to recover upwards of 500 health per second and more, while still having the abilities to hold aggro and go rampant over your enemies. If this interests you, then I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Also consider liking the video, hitting the bell icon, and subscribing to my channel to keep up to date on content by me on Ascension WoW. At 500 subs, I'll be hosting another giveaway. Now, we will start by going over how the synergy works together, followed by the talents, random enchants, and then the priorities and rotation to becoming an unstoppable, self-sustaining blood god tank yourself in Ascension WoW. First, I'd like to give an overview breakdown on how the ability Vampiric Embrace and the legendary enchant Blood for the Blood God synergize together. Alone, Vampiric Embrace just heals you from Shadow Priest damaging spells, which is completely useless to this build, until we add on the random enchant Twilight into the fold. This enchant makes it so Vampiric Embrace now also heals from any bleeds you inflict onto your target. It also makes you a spooky vampire to boot, though there is no cosmetic effect to show this unfortunately. In my opinion, I wish it had small bats that are flying around when you cast it, or perhaps a texture similar to the Berserking Weapon enchant, as an aura perhaps? Anywho, now as I said, this ability can give upwards of 500 healing per second, and I was not joking. With Twilight, the more bleed damage you deal, the more healing you receive. So the other part of this synergy is Blood for the Blood God. One of the enchant's passives, Bathe in Blood, is quintessential as it increases the bleed damage that your target receives by upwards of 270%. Meaning, as you fight, you'll steadily gain an increase in healing effectiveness as you build up 30 stacks. Each bleed effect is snapshotted to the stack you're currently on, meaning if you're at 10 stacks and each stack gives 9% and you use Rupture, then you'll be doing plus 90% damage for that specific rupture's duration. So, all in all, consistently be reapplying bleeds as you build up stacks as they will be stronger and stronger. On the side note though, do not spam the same damage over time abilities over and over as you need to allow time for your dots to deal damage so you can heal. This is mostly pointed at the Crimson Tempest ability combo point finisher. To remedy this, I bounce between the Rend plus Rupture combo and Crimson Tempest. I'll speak more on this soon. Before I move on, I'd also like to mention the change to the combo point generation on multiple targets is an absolute win for this build, as building 5 combo points up on a target before it died was an issue that is now completely resolved by the latest patch. Combo points are now player bound instead of bound to each target. Now the talents. I have chosen very similar talents to my original Blood God Blade Master video, so check that out here if you need more information on the base tank talents. So in this video, I'll go over the specific key talents that turn my Blood God Blade Master idea into a more vampiric, supportive, healing blood tank god. I have four key talents in total that make it so we can self-heal properly. To start, two points in improved Vampiric Embrace is a must as it increases the healing you receive by 67%. Next is two points in Quick Recovery, allowing the player 6% more healing received to bolster the healing taken bonus from Vampiric Embrace. This talent also recovers energy when you miss finishers, which happens occasionally, so it's a sweet added bonus. And if I had the ability Recuperate, this talent would be even stronger as it increases the healing Recuperate gives and provides increased energy regeneration as well. A Blood God main can only dream. I would stack more healing increases, but Quick Recovery says that it does not stack with other similar bonuses, so I thought that for 2 points, 6% was the most efficiently effective use of talent points. The other two talents are ones I've previously mentioned in almost all of my videos, but in this video, they will shine a different light. Cruelty and Trauma. On paper, they just seem like talents that increase the damage of our bleeds and also allow Ren to crit. In reality, this combo is essential for gaining maximum healing. Trauma increases the damage over time of all abilities by 30%, which means 30% more healing gained, basically making it so you start with 3 stacks of Bathe in Blood in terms of power, while Cruelty allows Ren to critically hit 
With the Bloodletting Random Enchant, you can spread Rend, which is the most damaging ability on up to 10 targets, meaning lots of Rends, and each one can critically deal damage, which will heal you for even more. Here's a full list of the talents I've chosen. The honorable mentions here are Deep Wounds, as the healing is almost negligible, but the extra bleed is still good for a longer duration on Hunger for Blood, and Blood Spatter, as the percentage increase in damage overall increases our healing effectiveness. Now, speaking of the Bloodletting Enchant, let's go over Random Enchants next. Blood for the Blood God is the staple of this build as it provides a steady increase of bleed damage over time with Bathe in Blood. This enchant also has an explosion ability with no target count, meaning just like Thunderclap, Favor of the Soul Flayer can hit any amount of targets, making it an excellent tool. Next, for Epic Enchants, I changed it up a bit and chose Twilight over Saber Slash, as I felt that Saber Slash was more of a pure damage dealing Blademaster, and Twilight turns us into a more vampiric Blademaster. Next, I took Bloodletting to spread Rend with my Rupture ability, and also Hellscream to spread more bleeds onto 5 targets that also scales with Rend. With this setup, anything you deal damage to will consistently replenish your health and keep you topped up. For rare enchants, I have changed it up from the original Blade Master layout. I replaced Honor Among Thieves for improved Vampiric Embrace, which increases the healing by another 10%. I also decided on Blood Spatter, which increases the damage you deal with Rupture, Crimson Tempest, and Rend by 12%, which is essentially more healing. I also take weapon expertise and precision to make up for hit rating and expertise when I need to. If I am able, I take anticipation for the 1% dodge chance. All in all, this is my full list here of all of my random enchants, and of course these are subject to change and more of a platform to build from, as finding a perfect balance between offense and defense will always be juggled and will need to be adjusted constantly with this build. This next part will be both a priorities and rotation section as I find myself in many different scenarios while tanking, so making just a rotation part wouldn't be enough. Starting on your priorities list, I always have a bleed on any target. Personally, I do this by starting each pull with a combo of charge, thunderclap, into hellscream. This will ensure that I have full aggro while also applying bleeds onto several targets. I use two hemorrhages for five combo points and then use dispatch for bathe in blood stacks into crimson tempest first. The reason for this is that crimson tempest has no hit count. Like I said previously in the video about abilities with no hit count, these abilities allow us to hit and hold an indefinite amount of opponents in range with our bleeds, meaning more healing over time. Thunderclap, favor of the soul flyer, Crimson Tempest, and Deep Wounds all have essentially no hit count, so all of these moves are your top priorities to maintain while tanking. One thing that's very important to note though, only use your Soul Flare Explosion at max stacks, or if you need instant aggro, or if it's going to fall off. Those are the only reasons. This is because with more stacks comes more healing, so abruptly falling off to zero stacks consistently is not advisable to for your healthy survival as a tank. My honorable mentions for this list are actually Molten Armor, which does a considerable amount of damage passively to all opponents. I highly recommend it over Frost Armor. Also, Holy Wrath is extremely powerful as it has no hit count either, and also stuns Undead as an enhancement, which is very useful for Strathholm, Undead, and Skullamance. Now, the regular rotation is simple. Continue after Crimson Tempest with two more hemorrhages into a rend, and then use Dispatch again into a Rupture to spread all those big damage bleeds. Rinse and repeat this, and I always mix Dispatch in between all my combo point finishers, and mix in Thunderclap, Whirlwind, and Holy Wrath to add on instant area of effect damage. I feel that this build will definitely get more powerful as you and the enemies gain more health, so the higher keys could prove this build more worthy than at low keys. I have this full build on the Heroes Architect now, and all of my other Blood for the Blood God builds as well. Just type in Archaeon into the search bar and you'll find them all. I believe that this idea of a blood tank and the random enchant Twilight have a lot of potential to give. Having the ability to focus on damage stats like attack power, crit, and haste to increase personal healing received allows for this tank build to hold aggro, deal massive damage, and become a true game changer among the pack of tanks available today. If you enjoyed today's video, then consider again liking and subscribing. This has been Varen, and I'll see you in the next one.